This is International Master Eric Kislik, and the following game that we're about to look at is just a bit too incredible to not make a video on. A Grandmaster with white rated 2564 lost in 10 moves in the Kolkata Open. And after we look at this, I'll show an example of a game where white lost in five moves, which is pretty much unheard of. I don't think there's another example of a Grandmaster losing in a classical game in five moves. That's just outrageous. But uh, this one is 10 moves, and, it, and actually the funny thing is both of the games that I'm going to show here occurred from the same opening. So uh, we start off with the Trompowski. So black just played d5, a very solid line. You're probably wondering, well, is this even going to get sharp? So black played the c6 line, very solid, does allow black to play queen b6 in some lines or queen a5 in some tactical lines, bishop to d3. Black just played bishop g4. Solid move. White often plays f3 here, but he opted to play knight bd7. So black just wants to play the normal plan of just retreating the bishop back to g6, trading off bishops, and just having a generally very solid position. So black plays knight bd7. Continuing development. f3, bishop h5. All right. All according to plan. Everything is completely normal. Castle, bishop to g6. Okay. Black's trying to trade off bishops. c4, e6. Black is just completely solid. And here white decided to go c takes d5, changing the structure a little bit. And now black played bishop takes d3. So what would you play here? Would you simply capture back or would you try to aim for some kind of tactical solution? In the game, white thought he was being clever and played d takes c6. And now if b takes c6, white would win a pawn. But he was completely shocked and had to resign immediately after the move bishop takes e2. So do you understand why he resigned? I'll show you why. It's because of undefended pieces and black simply counting the pieces correctly. So after the obvious move, c takes d7 check. Now there's the surprising move, knight takes d7. And now this undefended piece on g5 drops off because if black trades, I mean, if white trades off on d8, then black simply takes on d1 and trades, and now black is simply up a piece. We can count the minor pieces here. One, two, three. We simply have two for white. So you might be wondering, how am I supposed to count in a situation like this? Let's count together, okay? C takes d5, white is up a pawn. Bishop takes d3. Okay, so black has a piece for only a pawn. D takes c6. Okay, so there's a piece for two pawns. Now black plays bishop takes e2. So now black has two pieces for two pawns. C takes d7 check. Okay, knight takes d7. So now we're up a piece for only one pawn because we've given back one of our pieces. But in this position where both of the queens are attacked, so after a simple trade, black ends up up a piece. So this is just a basically uh, an intelligent case of counting and a surprising move, sacrificing the queen temporarily, but it's only an exchange. So it seems like white just simply overlooked knight takes d7 and uh, presumably just simply miscounted and lost the game. So um, an amazing result for black. I mean, you never expect to win a game like this in 10 moves against a grandmaster rated 25-64 which is in general, you know, quite a well-seasoned and strong grandmaster. So definitely credit to the player with black for kind of um, being on his toes and, and spotting this, this tactical point. So if he takes, then black simply goes queen takes g5. And here white only has one pawn for the piece, which uh, he decided wasn't worth playing out. So that was pretty incredible. I'll show you one more example, which is also quite incredible. Um, here's a game that occurred in pretty much the uh, very similar line, d4, knight to f6. This was played between James Plaskett and Erland Mikkelsen. Uh, I think I might have spelled Mikkelsen there uh, incorrectly, but um, in any case, uh, this is a, this started off as a Trompowski, and uh, white is a grandmaster rated close to 2500. The player with black is a fide master, and black played knight to e4, bishop f4 d5, e3. So this is this all looks very, very standard. Black played bishop f5, a very normal developing move. And now white played the move c4. 
And the funny thing about this move is white is actually completely losing after playing c4, which is rather comical. You might be wondering, how could he possibly be losing? Well, he doesn't have any obvious vulnerabilities except his king position. And when you notice that, you'll want to strike as quickly as possible to give yourself immediate threats against the king. So in this case, the most aggressive move that will give us an immediate threat against the king is the move e5, which is a fantastic move, fantastic shot, allowing us to play bishop to b4 check, drawing the king out into the center, and then bringing our queen out to give us further threats. So after bishop takes e5, black simply goes check. Of course, knight c3 can't be played after knight takes c3 check. I have knight takes c3 and then bishop takes c3 check, black will win an absurd amount of material. So king e2 is played, and now black simply goes queen to h4. And there's no natural way to defend this pawn on f2. Really, the only way to do that is either to go g3 or to go bishop to g3. I think bishop to g3 makes the most sense. So after bishop to g3, we can play the simple queen to h5 check. And uh, yeah, after knight to f3, here's the big problem. The big problem is that basically nothing can be developed. This can't be developed, the knight on b1 can't be developed, the bishop on f1 can't be developed. So black can just play the very simple d takes c4, and white is completely losing. And really, it's, it's almost a tragic comic position here. Nothing can be developed. And uh, so essentially, black's, black's simplest plan is maybe just to go castle and c5 and just blast open the position, and white is completely helpless. So white um, caught himself in a position which is forced after just five moves, which is completely lost. So if you have any better examples of a grandmaster losing a classical game and having a lost position in five moves, please tell me about it because this is the shortest game I've ever seen where a grandmaster was losing with white. And the other game that we looked at 10 moves is pretty impressive as well. I very, very rarely see that. So I hope you found this instructive and rather unusual, but it just kind of emphasizes that we have to be on our toes. We have to look for these tactical possibilities. We have to pay attention to our king. We have to watch out for undefended pieces. Hope you enjoyed this and please consider subscribing.